because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I never shut up, Barry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt rings. Right, the bouncer's guilt rings. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day. This is Colin. <laughs> this is Colin McGregor for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. Delighted to be joined by Gareth A. Davies here in Belfast, Ireland. You were just professing your love for Belfast. Yeah, well, How much do you enjoy it? Here? Pointed on a weird angle right now. It's, it's right on. Let me hold this. It's right on. The face. Okay, um, it's right on my face. That's I love the accent here. It's like, it's like crushed coal. Like crushed gold. I'm not sure if that's a compliment. I need oh, oh, it is. Oh, it is. You need to. Oh. I'm not sure if that's a compliment. I want to first. Oh. I want to first touch on the, this city. Let's talk about the history of this city and you being here for such an historic night in Irish boxing. Hopefully, when Michael gets his hand raised and the new. How do you see this fight going? And being around the city, what's it like for you? There's a beauty about Belfast. Any of the 784,000 followers on IFL TV, get yourself to Belfast. Get yourself to Belfast on a fight weekend. The people here are special. I'm an old bloke by now. Hang on. Let me do it. Timbuktu and all those places I talk about going on IFL TV. This is a very special place. Obviously, Michael Conlon is born and bred here. Belfast will breathe with him tomorrow night. They will be as one when he walks to the ring. When that, when that song Grace is played about the guy that wrote a poem and he wrote it 15 minutes before he died to the one he loved, that embracing of oblivion, that, that commitment to the cause. This is a very serious place. A lot of serious things have gone down here. Um, that I don't need to go into and document. We've been in the Europa Hotel twice this week for the press conference in the way, and it was the most bombed hotel in Belfast during the Troubles. Um, but there's a beauty about the people, a communicative way that they have, a beauty in them that makes you feel so welcome here. They love being hospitable in this city. But I'll tell you another thing. They're fucking hard as nails. It's everywhere, on every street corner. But there's just, there's a lot of joy in giving here. Am I wrong? You're right in what you say, but you've been to all these cities throughout the world. How does this compare in terms of a fighting city and the, and the people that, that have represented this city in the fighting game? It's a little bit similar to coming to Dublin, but there's a, there's a, a passion and an intensity about the fans. They'll be vicious in there, but they know they're boxing. So if Lopez does outbox Michael Conlon, he'll be given his dues. The fans won't boo him out. Even today at the weigh-in, they wanted to boo, but they didn't really. Um, Michael Conlon's got his hands full with a man who calls himself the deer, his Apollo, his nickname, because he's a prancer. He prances, and he says he learnt it from playing football, and he's heavy-handed. But Michael is the kind of boxer who can switch naturally between Southpaw and Orthodox, which he needs to do in this fight. In my view, he needs to get ahead in the early rounds. He needs to not let Lopez set a pattern. As he did against Josh Warrington, he got ahead in the fight and he played with the referee, he played on Warrington being dirty, all those kind of things. I think Conlon probably needs to keep his energy right inside himself and his emotion deep inside himself. It's his sixth fight in Bel Belfast. Um, and not get too carried away with the emotion of the occasion. It'll be the first time a Belfast man has won a world title since Carl Frampton back in 2016, I think. Double world champion. No, it was earlier than that. It was, uh, that was in Belfast, I think. 16. Anyway... He's following in the line of Frampton, who's a totemic fig figure in this city, for lots of different reasons, and across the sectarian divide, um, in a fascinating way. Um, Michael has the boxing wherewithal, the IQ, the coolness of a cucumber, to go in there and get the job done. But for me, he has to be effective and fast early on, go into exchanges, and dominate the early rounds and let Lopez chase him in the later rounds. That way, his counter-punching will come to the fore. He doesn't want, in my view, and Jamie Conlon, his brother, his promoter, is sitting over there as well. I want to say this honestly. 
I don't want to see him fighting the fight and f chasing the fight in the last four rounds because Lopez is two rounds ahead. Make it your night. Make it your night. This could be a crowning night for a brilliant boxer who's incredibly decorated, who is a standout in the sport, who is a gentleman fighter. They both are. That's why this is set up for a magnificent occasion, and it will be electric in that Odyssey arena. When you think of the defeat to Lee Wood, do you think almost that has been a blessing in disguise for Michael because you come to this point in your home city where you're going for that world title in front of your home fans and you've been there, you've done it, you've hit the canvas, you've experienced that defeat? Does that stand him in good stead? I'd never call a knockout a blessing. And he was knocked clean out of the ring, remember. But what it did do, he has the wherewithal as a human being, the resourcefulness. Remember those wonderful... He did a great article with Elliot Wurzel, a great interview with Elliot Wurzel in Boxing News about what it was like going back to the first sparring session after he'd been knocked out. And he was depleted in exhaustive terms in that fight. It was an amazing fight. Probably fight of the year last year, to be all, in all honesty. And weirdly... I'd like to see him fight Lee Wood again. Because these are the fights that fans remember for decades later. Decades. Because it had everything, that fight. He put Wood down early. He was dominating Wood. Wood battles back. Michael has a slip in a few of the rounds. And then that 12th round, unbelievable. But yes, he will have learned from it. I spoke to Jamie about that a couple of days ago. And he said, you know, and his words... He'd be stupid not to learn for it. Of course, he's a professional boxer. He's been doing this his entire life. He's, an, as I said, a decorated amateur, a very experienced exponent. This is the route. This, is, this victory is the route to riches. It's the route to top rank getting that Belfast crowd, the Irish crowd, to travel to New York next, to travel to Las Vegas, to match him against Rob C. Ramirez in the future. This is such a big fight. But he seems really cool, calm and collected. Lopez told me today in Spanish, afterwards for top rank, that he saw nerves and he saw anxiety in Michael Conlon. I didn't. But the bo boxers have a different thing when they look into each other. You look nervous and anxious. I know it's your debut with me tonight. So ne never with you, Gareth. Never with you. Although this is this is my this is my debut with you, but it's it's going swimmingly so far, so I'm happy enough for this. I have to ask you, right? Would you say that Lopez questions to elevate the Oh it's going it's going to, it's about to. Would you say that Lopez is a trickier opponent for Michael because of his unorthodox style than Lee Wood was? Well, Lee Wood's a bruiser, isn't he? And he can go into battles. And But look what Conlon did early in that fight. No one was expecting him to kind of separate Lee Wood from his senses. No one was expecting that. And I like that power test for him because Wood's a strong man. He's a very strong 33, 34-year-old man. He, he's physically strong. Um, Lopez has a very awkward style. But to use the analogy of... A football game if you're tackling that man don't watch what the man's doing and his feet are doing just watch the ball go for the ball and that's what he needs to do with Lopez not look at Lopez's style but make it and not try and mirror him make it his style make it his fight but make that early make those inroads early the crowd's going to be swayed that the judges may be swayed by the crowd as well, which happens for the home fighter. But Lopez has proven he can go in the lion's den. So they can rule out Lopez crumbling. He's, you've looked at him all week. He walks around like a world champion. He's got a beautiful air about him. He's a gentleman fighter. I love they shook hands today as well. Across in Manchester, we've had obviously the, the disputes on the weight and stuff tonight. What do you make of that, first of all? Is that dangerous for Lee Wood to go into a fight giving away this weight? No, I don't think so. It's it's weirdly it's an advantage, because in what way? Well, Lara Lara doesn't. It, it, they stripped him, haven't they? They've stripped him. Yeah. yeah. So he stripped his world title. So he's on a lose lose. He doesn't retain his world title if he wins, and uh, Lee Wood has the opportunity, as he did in the first fight, being ahead on the on the judges' cards at the time to outbox this guy. Yes, they'll jump in. Ben Davison will let him off the leash if they see um, Lara in trouble, but. But if you're giving away this weight, right, and there's no rehydration clause or check tomorrow before this fight happens, are you not at a disadvantage that Mauricio Lara has already knocked you out? 
he can do it again with extra weight behind him. Yeah, I think Lara is a very dangerous fighter in the division. Um, I think Conlon is right up there. I think Lara is right up there. Lopez is. Wood is. Robson Ramirez is. Um, it's an amazing division. Um, yeah, th what you say is right. You know, technically right in terms of weight and adding weight, taking weight off. You're absolutely spot on with your observation. Is it dangerous to say that well, the fighter, the fighter still, sport. yeah, it's but the fighter still, dangerous sport. but the fighter still going to go in there at a disadvantage technically. Yeah, but he's not going to be 155 pounds when he get when he steps in there, is he? He could be what. He could, 135? 135? 130, 140, yeah. Maybe. He could be 140, yeah. But Lee Wood is a big man as well. I, I imagine Lee, what did he weigh in? Did he weigh in at 126 today? Yeah. yeah. I didn't check because I was busy here. Um, he'll be 135. Lee's, Lee's, Lee's not a small man. Have you been with him physically? I have, yeah. He's not a small man. How, how do you think it goes, that fight, with everything factored in, though? My heart wants Lee Wood to win. Like, my heart wants Michael Conlon to win tomorrow night. But my head is saying Lara wins late by stoppage again. We've got another fight in Bournemouth, which is an interesting duel because you've got a guy in Lawrence Acoli who's left that camp. He's got the experience of being around that camp. You could say the same for Bill and Smith being around Acoli. How do you think that goes? I think uh, Lawrence Acoli will stop Bill and Smith late because Bill and Smith's got to make it a dog fight. He can't stand off and out jab Lawrence Coley, 85 inch wingspan, huge guy, he's a heavyweight really, fighting in the cruiserweight division, um, he's a freakishly big man, got massive power with the right hand, didn't look good in his last performance against David Light, but in 50 fights, amateur and pro, he has won the British European Commonwealth and WBO cruiserweight titles and has never been beaten, and no one's looked close to beating him, got very awkward, very difficult style, Smash and grab, I call it. And I've always said to Lawrence, don't lose your style. That Because the uniqueness over the years of fighters is what made them. Joe Calzaghe, bop, 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 bop. Ricky Han, to the body. Amir Khan, fast hands. Nazim Hamid, hands down. You know, power from those huge thighs. Um, they've all got their own styles. Carl Froch, chin, right hand, big jab, bringing people to war. When you stick to your own style, that's your uniqueness. So Coley does squat a little bit more now, plants a little bit more, and is a bit better at that, which he learned under Shane McGuigan. Fourth coach in 19 fights, Sugar Hill Stewart. I don't know what Sugar's adding to, adding to him. Um, Lawrence has already got the equaliser, but I just think Billum Smith will go for it in front of 15,000 adoring fans. Probably one fan there for, for or three for Lawrence Coley that'll be in his corner and there'll be 14,997 there for the battle on the beach in Bournemouth, like here, the battle in, of Belfast. It's all B, 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 B. And let's hope it's all thrilling and exciting on the night. I do need to I've ask to as well. I know you do. We'll go really quick, right? So there's a announcement tonight. Mike Coppinger has reported breaking news that Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua is being spoken about for September. Do you think that's feasible with this whole December in Saudi that was pitched? Tyson Fury's also put out a post saying he's offered this to, to Anthony Joshua. Well, if that's brilliant, if they do, it's the biggest fight in Britain. It's the biggest fight in the England. How do you see it playing out? I think Fury toys with him and knocks him out in seven or eight rounds, but I'd love to see an amazing fight where they both go down and both get up. And we get with the money, classic. with the money involved for Saudi, I don't think they will fight. By the way, because I'm hearing that Tyson Fury being offered 90 million US dollars to fight in Saudi at the end of the year against Usyk, the fight with Usyk and Dubois has been made, hasn't it, for Poland? They've won the purse bids. Um, Usyk will earn 50, 60 million US dollars in in Saudi. Um, you know. Uh, Deontay Wilder and, and Anthony Joshua are going to earn 50 odd million each dollars. Um, so that's setting up for there. I think, I think Fury's back from Australia in a couple of days. I've spoken to people behind the scenes and they are going to talk to him about getting a summer fight in August, late, late July, August. Um, but I don't think it'll be Anthony Joshua. If it is, brilliant. But, you know, I've been around the houses with this for a long time and, like, ringing around all the guys involved for... And, you know, I'm fairly close to Tyson Fury's people, as I get shit for all the time. Um, and I'm going to declare I'm not a fanboy. I just work with him. Um, I just don't see it. 
I don't see it. I don't see it as the next best move. But if there's enough money on the table, are we talking Wembley Stadium? Well, I would imagine so. Well, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Last one, because I know you're pushed for time. You've got a, a dinner with, with Top Rank coming up. Um, Spence Crawford finally officially announced. How you see that one? Well, I mean, it is going to happen. They've done the official announcement. I see in your face you're not you're not hundred percent convinced. They've got the money right now, obviously, because it was about the money. These two should have fought first time three years ago. They should be on their trilogy fight right now, which would be make legacy for them. I hope it's controversial. I hope it's close. And I hope they have a second fight. Like I hope Haney and Lomachenko have a second fight as well, because it will. It's the making of them. The second fight. There's always. How do you so think the first one goes? I think Crawford wins. I think Crawford is on a different level. He makes adjustments. He's amazing, and his stablemate Shakur Stevenson will be the number one pound for pound in my view in two years' time. Right, the final one. This is the final that one, right? Final one. Co- Connor Ben, Con- Connor Ben, Chris Eubank Jr. Two out of right, ten. Connor Ben. Very very pushy. I saw in that interview you did with Eddie Hearn. Very very pushy man. Go have on, to be, have on. to be in have to be in this climate, no, Garth. Go on, go on. Right, no, Connor Ben, Chris Eubank Jr. It looks as if it's going to be announced. Eddie has spoke about it today to say that. He wants that fight next. Do you want to see that fight next? I don't mind. I, I mean, you, you know, obviously I'm glad Connor's doing his hearing, as I've said on record many times. Maybe it's good news in terms of the hearing that they're getting good soundings from, from the tribunal. Um, and if so, great for Connor. Absolutely brilliant for him. Love to see the fight, but it's got to be at middleweight. If that fight happens at middleweight, how does it go? I think there's so much anger and pent-up emotion in Conor Ben. He's going to beat everyone when he comes back. That's it. Gareth, I appreciate your time. Absolute legend. Lovely to we'll, uh, you. we'll catch up again and do another one too. Umar is already jealous. He's envy right now because he, he thinks I'm his. Not no more, Umar. No, That's you're it. Done. You're done, Umar. Column's the new man. <laughs> Gareth, thanks for your time. Appreciate it, mate. Pleasure. Because I refuse to not be first. Do we do enough? Well, I, I never shot, shot up, Harry. Uh, it must have been about 17, 16, 17. We nicked their guilt wins. Right, the bouncer's guilt wins. This is no good for me. That's the reality. If you want the honest truth, and I see it every day.